the princess and the pea illustrated by Dubrakva Kolinathic. Once upon a time there was a lonely prince. He lived in a big castle with beautiful rooms and a pretty garden. But he wasn't happy because he didn't have someone special to share them with. If only I could find a lovely princess to marry, sighed the prince. Oh, if only I could find a princess to share my life with, I would be so happy. The king and queen did their best to help. They held balls so the prince could meet princesses from all the nearby kingdoms. The prince danced with tall princesses and small princesses. He talked to loud princesses and proud princesses. He met all kinds of princesses, but none of them was quite right. Thank you, mother and father, for having this ball. Oh, you're very welcome, dear. We hope you find someone. Thank you. The prince danced with tall princesses. Wow, you are very tall. Yes, thank you. And he danced with short princesses. Thank you for the dance. <clears throat> he danced with loud princesses. Hi, how's it going? Woo. You are very loud. I am fine. How are you? I am very good. Da, 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 da. I have met so many princesses this evening, but none of them are right for me. After a while, the king and queen ran out of princesses for their son to meet. Maybe it's time you went looking for a bride, suggested the queen. So the prince packed a bag, saddled his horse, and waved goodbye to the king and queen. Good luck, said the king. Come back soon. The prince traveled far and wide and searched high and low for the princess of his dreams. I think it's time for you to go out and search the world for a princess just for you. All right, I will do it. I'll see you when I get back. Goodbye, dear. Good luck. Along the way, he met lots of lovely princesses. Princess Grace loved to dance, but her twirling made the prince dizzy. Princess Ginger loved to cook, but her cakes made the prince chubby. Princess Flora loved to smell as pretty as a flower, but her perfume made the prince sneezy. Ah, choo! I have met so many princesses, but Princess Grace loved to dance. Hello! And her spinning made me so dizzy. I love to twirl, twirl, twirl. Oh, it was very nice to meet you. It was nice to meet you too. Princess Ginger loved to cook. <clears throat> and her food was just delicious. It made me so chubby. Oh, here, try my cookies. Oh, they're very delicious. Thank you, thank you. It was very nice to meet you, Princess Ginger. It was very nice to meet you, too. Princess Flora loved to smell as pretty as a flower. Well, we do have garden loving gardens in common. Yes, we do. Ah, choo! Oh, are you okay? Ah, choo! I think I'm allergic to your perfume. Oh, I'm so sorry. It was very nice to meet you, though, Princess Flora. It was nice to meet you, too. Maybe I'm just too fussy, thought the prince, but in his heart he knew he hadn't meant the, met the princess of his dreams, so he headed back to the castle. When he got home, the king and queen greeted the prince happily. I haven't found a princess yet, he sniffled sadly. I guess I never will. Don't be silly, said the queen. The right girl will come along soon. Son, you're home. Yes, alas, I've come home, but I am all alone. I haven't found a princess yet. Oh, don't worry. You'll find someone. You'll see. Let us go to dinner. All right. That night there was a terrible storm. 
thunder boomed loudly, so loudly that it rattled the castle's window, windows. Rattle tattle! Lightning shook the table as the prince and his parents sat down to eat their dinner. The prince was about to help himself to dinner when suddenly they all heard a loud rat-a-tat-tat. Someone was knocking on the door. Who could be visiting us on a night like this? asked the queen. The prince opened the door and found a very wet girl standing there. Raindrops ran down her muddy cloak, making a puddle at her feet. Drip, drop, drip, drop, drip, drop. The girl pushed back her hood and wild curls tumbled out. Hello, she said with a smile. I got lost on my way home and wondered if I could stay here for the night. My name is Princess Polly. She didn't look much like a princess, but princes must always be polite, so he invited her inside. Soon the princess was warm and dry. Just as they were sitting down to dinner, a thunder and lightning storm hit. And it was very, very loud. It shook the windows. My goodness, it's a nasty night out tonight. It is indeed. They heard a knock at the door. Who could be out in a storm like this? I'll get the door. Hi. My goodness, you're all wet. Yes, it's very bad out. I got a little bit turned around um, when I was on my way home. Do you mind if I stayed here? <clears throat> and then started off in the morning again. Of course, come in. Join us for dinner. Thank you. All night long, rain fell, plippity-plop, plippity-plop, on the castle roof. But the prince hardly noticed because he was so busy talking to Princess Polly. She was pretty and funny and kind. Princess Polly was everything the prince had hoped to find in a princess. By the end of the evening, the prince had fallen in love. I am Princess Polly. It's so very nice to meet you. And they talked and talked and talked all night long. The prince felt like he had finally found the princess of his dreams. By the end of the evening, he loved her. I'm having such a nice job time. Me too. But the queen wanted to be sure that the girl really was a princess. The queen told the servants to pile a bed high with mattresses. They heaved one on top of another until they had no more mattresses left. Then they placed a pillow and quilt right at the top. Underneath the mattress, at the very bottom, the queen placed a teeny tiny pea. Only a real princess would be able to feel something so small through all those mattresses. But the queen wasn't sure if she was a real princess, so she was going to have a test. She stacked as many mattresses as she could find in the house. And she placed one teeny, tiny pea under the very last mattress. because a princess would be able to feel a pea in, under the mattresses. So she was going to wait and see what happened. When the queen showed Princess Polly to her bedroom, the girl gazed up at the tower of mattresses but didn't say anything. She was just grateful to have a bed for the evening. Good night, said Princess Polly. Sleep tight, whispered the queen. Then Princess Polly changed into her nightgown and climbed right to the top of the pile of mattresses and snuggled under the quilt. Oh, Princess Polly, here's your room. Oh, thank you. What a tall bed. Yes, I hope you'll be very comfortable. I am sure I will. Thank you very much. And she climbed all the way up to the very top. She was very tired. And she <clears throat> got under the blankets and put her head down. The next morning, Princess Polly came down to breakfast with dark circles under her eyes. She let out a great big yawn. How did you sleep, my dear? asked the queen. Princess Polly burst into tears. I'm afraid I couldn't sleep a wink. There was something lumpy and bumpy in my bed. It kept me awake all night long. In the morning, she climbed back down the mattresses. Oh, I can't believe what a hard night I had. I didn't sleep a wink. 
Oh, dear. I'm so very tired. To Princess Polly's surprise, the queen clapped her hands with delight. So she is a real princess, the queen cried. The prince was overjoyed. Will you marry me, Princess Polly, he asked. Yes, squealed the princess. And they all lived happily ever after. The end. Good morning, Princess Polly. How did you sleep? Oh, I'm so sorry. I slept terribly. Something was very lumpy and bumpy in my bed, and it kept me awake all night long. The, to Princess Polly's surprise, the queen started clapping. Oh, I'm so happy. That must mean you're a real princess. Why, yes, I am a real princess. Princess Polly, will you marry me? Oh, yes, yes, I will marry you. <clears throat> they all lived happily ever after. I'm so happy.